Chicken keeping is not new. It's something that human beings have literally been practicing for millennia. It is something that really belongs to all of us. It is innate within us, and my plan is to keep it that way. Hey guys, welcome to Chickenlandia. I am a backyard chicken educator here in the Pacific Northwest, but you can call me the president of Chickenlandia. I've been a backyard chicken educator for many years now. What I've really tried to do from the beginning is just never stop learning, always admit when I make a mistake, and I really feel like if there is a chicken keeper or an educator that will not admit their mistakes and is not willing to continue to learn, that that is like a big red flag. I do not recommend following that person. Uh, I just think it's important to be able to never stop learning. Really, up until when the pandemic started, the way that I taught people to keep chickens was very different from what I do now. I just felt like you needed to have a certain amount of money, that you had to feed them in the most expensive way possible, give them the best coop possible. But really what that did is it excluded a lot of people. And now I've kind of shifted my perspective and I've realized that the more people that are able to keep chickens, the better situation we are in, really, in the whole world. So I'm trying now to really make chicken keeping more inclusive, more accessible, and that's where I've just shifted my whole teaching style. And I, I feel better here, honestly. Something that is really important for you to have uh, and that doesn't cost anything is your own trust in your intuition. And I know that sounds like totally cheesy to some of you. Some of you will be, some of you will be like, yes, yes, I get that. And some of you will be like, oh, come on. But really what I'm trying to say is that we have a natural intuition to care for animals. And certainly chickens have been domesticated for millennia. We have been doing this a long time. Almost all cultures in the world have this within us. So if we can just kind of reconnect with that part of us that knows that this is what we're supposed to be doing, we have what we need, we have you know, our own ingenuity to make this work, then I think your, keep, your chicken keeping journey is gonna be a lot easier in the long run if you can remember that. One thing that is probably intuitive for you, but that you may have been told to do otherwise, is obviously chickens belong in nature. That is where they belong. They do not belong shielded from nature. Certainly they don't belong in factory farms. They are supposed to be interacting with the natural environment and to try and keep them away from bugs and dirt and grass and fresh air and you know wild birds from even getting near them all of that is futile because you will be spending money you will be wasting resources you will be stressing out trying to keep them from something that is the most natural thing for them. Now, of course, there might be some extreme circumstances where there's like some crazy disease going around for, that is attacking birds, and so your local authorities are telling you to keep them in their coop or whatever. I'm not telling you not to do that. There's always an exception to the rule. But generally, if we don't allow chickens access to nature and exposure to the things that are outside, what we're actually doing is lowering their defenses, not only for the flocks that we have, but for future flocks. I tell people, if you're worried about disease, if you're worried about parasites, if you're worried about mites, the main thing you want to do is just focus on keeping the balance in your flock. And what I mean by that is your flock should have a balanced life. They should not be stressed out. They should have the right nutrition. They just need to have all the things that they need in nature to be happy, and then they will be healthier. So focus on that, and it doesn't cost anything. Okay, let's go into my coop. Hello, friends. 
So obviously I have a big beautiful coop. I know that I am very fortunate, but I do want to tell you that when it comes to coops, what I try to remind people is that for many, many, many years throughout the ages, chickens didn't even have coops. They literally slept in the trees. My great grandmother's chickens, they slept in the trees. Now, people you probably had like uh, guardian animals that would help that, so that the chickens didn't get eaten all the time. That's, de that's definitely a concern. But it helps to remember like when you're building your coop or you wanna buy a coop or you're worried about the coop that you have, you, you think it's not good enough. Remember that chickens are adaptable, that they really don't need a lot. They need a, a place to sleep, some roosts. They need some a place to lay their eggs and they need to be shielded from the elements. And if you can focus on that, just remember that otherwise chickens are really resilient and they're really adaptable. So if you feel like they're comfortable, they are probably comfortable and your coop doesn't have to be perfect. If you don't have a lot of money to predator proof, instead of really just losing your mind, focusing on getting the best materials, focus on creating the most obstacles for a predator trying to get into your run. So what I mean is, you know, if a predator is trying to get into your run and they have to get past a bunch of rocks or they have to get past layers of chicken wire, or they have to get past like wood or like, you know, pieces of wood that maybe you've buried into the ground. The more obstacles they have, the more time you are buying to be able to shoo them away or to have them give up. So focus on that instead of, you know, trying to get the very best materials because that's just not an option for everybody. And I understand that and that's okay. So I know that feed is a huge expense for a lot of people and it can be a big expense if we have this thought that the only thing chickens can eat is their chicken feed and that is not true. You can make sprouts for them and I do have a video about that. I'll put that in the description. You can give them healthy kitchen scraps. You can ferment their feed which will not only expand the volume of the feed but it will also increase the bioavailability of the nutrition in the feed and that can not only make them eat less of it but it's also it just gives you more bang for your buck because they're just getting more nutrition in every bite i do have a video you can click on it right here it's all about how to ferment cheaper chicken feed and make it better for your chickens and for your family of course it's 100 percent friendly backyard chickens education and entertainment and i know you're gonna love it